Communism. I have always been a communist, but quite rightly, the other communists have no faith in me. I was a communist too far beyond their certainties and my doubts. Quite rightly, they refused to recognize me. My discipline was something they couldn't see. My centralism looked like anarchy. My self-criticism refuted their self-criticism. You can't be a communist all to yourself. To think so means you're not one. So quite rightly, my comrades haven't recognized me as such. A slave of capital is what I am, just like them, more than them, because I forgot it. They kept working. I saw only my own pleasure. That's another reason I've always been a communist. Too far beyond their certainties and my doubts, I always wanted an end to this world, an end to me too. This too, especially this, pushed them away. My hopes were no help to them. My centralism looked like anarchy. Like someone who wants more truth for himself to, so as to be truer to others and so that the others can be truer to him. That's the way I lived and will die. That's why I've always been a communist. I always wanted an end to this world. Living, I've lived long enough to see the comrades who wounded me crushed by a terrible knowledge. But tell me, you knew I was one of your own, didn't you? And for that, you hated me? Oh, but my truth is indispensable, scattered through time and air, hearts more heedful of learning. Reality. The city I'm talking about does not exist. It's an idea of reason and of the will. Hoping to make myself understood, I call it by an unfamiliar name. Its avenues lead out into the void. Its groceries stay open late. There, your friends have made up names. Which of them is living? Which dead? Probably they are lapis lazuli scarabs in the museum, catalog entries, snapshots, exam honoraria, or with a sob caught in their throat, they sleep the afternoon away. Yes, I once went to Jela. Another time, I even passed through Roubaix. For several months, I lived in Rome. That doesn't amount to much. To realize that in a brain as weary as mine, idealism still wins out, that's really something else. Typists cover up the calculators. Cats mind their own business. In the garage, they're cleaning carburetors. That's reality. If you drop your newspaper, it blows around and ends up in the hydrangeas. You don't want to give up on syntax. Fiction is your final hope. Someone phones and your voice registers anxiety. History, you go back to saying, is all the reality there is, but that's not so. You're just trying to buck up your courage. Reading gets hard. Domestic noises announce dinner time and give you a way out. There's a war movie at the Cristallo Cinema, a lively debate on TV. Duty, according to Schiller, lies in resistance. Dante insists on a challenging rhyme scheme. So you see why even friends have become just names, why you dream of nothing but a hearse, why you're talking about Turin does not mean there's a city by that name anywhere in the world. And even if there was, it wouldn't matter. You only use the plural to warn the children not to strip on the stairs. Everything's horrible, but not yet irreparable.